Man, nothing like a resource so pivotal becoming so trivial overnight, am I right? Folks, Gears just got easy. Like, super easy. Plus, they even have entirely new and refined crafts for us, too. Yup, I'm as surprised as you are about this revisit, but oh boy, are we all gonna be very happy about the updated guide here? If we can find our Moon Key Islands, that is. While easier said than done, I will say that they absolutely love the edges of our worlds, so starting there and then sailing around said worlds is highly advised for more than one reason. Today, however, all we care about is the newly introduced broken machinery here. These structures absolutely litter the joint, even beyond the unnatural portal mind and drop one gear, one cutstone, and one frazzled wires each. They're practically mini broken clockworks, and I guarantee you will be walking away with almost 20 gears easily. Just mind the monkeys. But another new source of these things is a two for one, the Twins of Terror. Now they're certainly not as easy as grabbing a hammer and finding an island out there on the ocean, but they are renewable, very much unlike the machinery, and drop three to five gears each time, so I think it will be worth the struggle. And yes, we can also now deconstruct their Shield of Terrors for two gears too, but I advise you to simply make use of the thing. It's actually really good. And while they will already do it for the new sources of gears, we should still highlight the rest as some have changed. Not Graves Mind, so check your mosaic graveyards, forests, and labyrinths for a whopping 3.0% chance at a gear while disturbing the dead, because chances are you're gonna find something useful anyways. Tumbleweeds found within the Dragonfly Desert have always been a great option when looking for gears, and today is not gonna change that, regardless of the 1% chance to roll a tier that even holds a gear, let alone the actual chances at getting one, because tumbleweed farming is just too safe not to take advantage of. And again, chances are you're gonna find some other good stuff along the way. Another easy and safe option that hasn't really changed much is the hunting of sunken treasure. Once Pearl has been met, all messages in a bottle found on the water have a 34% chance to generate a sunken chest out there on the high seas that might just be filled with one to two gears and then some. Now they're not the best choices for gear specifically, but trust me, you will not be disappointed. But how about some other guaranteed drops that also haven't changed, Beard? Well, there's always a marble biome and its potential clockworks just as long as one or two marble biomes have actually generated on the surface at the end of the day, but the marble sculptures themselves should always generate no matter what, and once completed, they too will give us the clockworks we so desperately need on occasion. Be mindful though, what you see before you hear can not only only be done during full moon nights, it can only be done once. Yes, even if you've built your own clockwork statues. To continue, however, our last sources of the day all rest underground and within the ruins proper, so we best get to it. That said, both the atrium and the labyrinth will also house what we're looking for too, so perhaps it's best to just check it all. But what we need are damaged clockworks, everybody, but not damaged bishops. For you see, only knights and rooks drop gears down here at one apiece. So make notes. And once you're done surviving all of that, do not forget to turn your attention to all the broken clockworks around the joint, as each will have a 25% chance to drop a gear when hammered. Now, there is also a 10% chance at a second gear if we ourselves repair these clockworks with gears. However, that process costs us three gears each, so I really wouldn't bother unless you want a friendly robot army to go along with it. But speaking of hammering, broken ancient pseudo-sign stations can also be smashed open for gears, but chances are you're going to find a lot more trouble than any of the actual good stuff that you see in that table there, so I'd more than likely pass on this, especially if you're still learning the ruins. And lastly, and the one thing that's probably changed the most, an ancient guardian kill now nets more gears than ever before because these large ornate chests now drop more loot than ever before in the first place. Oh, 
And yes, literally everything you just saw down here is renewable through an ancient fuel weaver kill and ruins resets, so make note there. But how about we end the day with some uses of gears? Yes, WX78 players now no longer get stat upgrades from them, sure, but they can still very much heal all stats with a much or two of gears, so don't forget it. Them same WX78 players can do themselves a great favor by scanning a rook, a damage Rook, or the Ancient Guardian itself for the Super Acceleration Circuit Craft that will grant them a 25% speed boost for everyone socketed within their charge meter at the cost of a single gear and a scanning of a rabbit for Pete's sake, which is nuts. Rudder Kits are another new addition to the gear family actually, although I wouldn't be surprised if you not only never knew of them before today, but if you also continue to ignore them following today because they don't do much. What you see is what you get. They turn boats. And no, they do not impact the direction of masts. I think Clay added these for the cannons, but now cannons can be aimed anywhere. So yeah, at least bumpers do give them a use, I suppose. Ice boxes are a go-to for gear crafts, as I'm sure many of you already know. So I don't think there's too much need to spend too much time on them. Just enjoy preserving food for far longer. Ice fling omatics are even more of a staple craft when it comes to gears, but again, I'm fairly certain most already know of their potential, even if they've always struggled to get a lot of them. They stop fires, they cancel smoldering and thus wildfires, they have an emergency mode that's gonna kick in for you after 15 seconds in case you're not around, and heck, you might even know of their mob farm and boss utilities to an extent. At the end of the day, ice flingomatics here are usually what we're trying to get gears for as early as possible. Weather panes are almost in the same vein, at least when talking about the latter, as they're more a tool than weapon, given how most of us are gonna use them to chop toadstool's trees stop the fuel weaver and crab king from healing, so on and so forth. And last, but certainly not least, the insulated pack is a portable fridge that is cheaper than ever and can also no longer burn. So even I might have to start giving this thing a bit more love now and then, especially after that last change. They're fridges with a little less space, but they also never ever break. But there you have it everyone, gears updated and revisited for all your mechanical needs. Honestly though, broken machinery is all you really need to know and take away from the day, so just do that and I think you'll never want for gears ever again. Thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the robot revolution. Bye-bye.